And speaking of that, our next guest can speak uh, to the situation with the Clintons. He can talk basically to all of it in the 25 minutes we have with Joseph Farah. Joseph Farah worked for some of the biggest newspapers in the country as editor. He then started the Western Journalism Center in the early 1990s that was listed as the number one enemy of the Clintons in the documents they got last year from the Clinton uh, Foundation. They're based at his library. Uh, and Farah said it was so stunning when he first got it that he, he only released a small part of it. Uh, now they're doing more stories on it and ready to tell us more about what's in it. But released Clinton files on media enemies and how they foresaw the rise of new media they wouldn't control. Now, Matt Drudge was in Politico yesterday as the number one news political site in the world, even dwarfing Facebook. But we go back to who really was first. And you've got to say it's Joseph Farah. Sure, Ron Paul was with newsletters and so are other folks out there. And we, we owe that to them. Barry Goldwater was talking like we're talking back in the 50s and 60s. Senator Goldwater. What a great president he would have made. But Joseph Farah really deserves our thanks. WND.com. There's so much to get in the limited time we have, but he warned in, in the last election that we were going to really see an attempt to overthrow the country, and, and now we're seeing it. I want to see what he thinks is coming next. Uh, Joseph Farah, I could ask a lot of questions, but uh, what do you think's front and center, my friend? Well, I think, Alex, we're seeing something going on now with this invasion, both, you know, that's been going on in the United States for a long time, as you've been reporting for many, many years. A lot of people didn't really get excited about it until, you know, massive numbers of people started coming over the border here. Now we're seeing it, of course, in, in Europe. <laughs> We've got, you know, the president of the United States saying, hey, we'll take some of those refugees off the hands of Europe, you know, we, we've got plenty of space in this country. We can handle you know, virtually an unlimited number of uh, so-called refugees who, you know, I don't think they're refugees at all. What's, what's stunning about what we see going on, I think, uh, in Europe particularly right now, is that, the you know, uh, these are mostly uh, Sunni Muslims who uh, are, uh, you know, storming into Europe. And... Uh, they're, they're not the victims of what's been going on in the Middle East for so long. I mean, the Sunni Muslims are the perpetrators of the horrors that we've seen, uh, not, not just recently, but really for a very long time. In the they're Middle the East. ones taking over Libya, Egypt, Syria, Egypt. Iraq. They're the majority. I'm not demonizing them as a whole, but undoubtedly, they're Saudi Arabian backed. You're absolutely right. So what is the West thinking, Socialist Merkel and others, advertising come here so hundreds of thousands turn into millions and they tell German women don't wear short skirts? I mean, where are the political correct people on this? Why does the left have a fetish on sexual mutilation, women can't drive cars and wearing bags on their heads? Why does the left worship radical Islam? Yeah, really, it's it's it shows that they don't mean what what they say they mean. I mean, it, it, there aren't too many more stark examples than this. Uh, you know, these are the multicultural people too. They're, they're the ones who are always telling us, you know, every culture is is great. They're all equal. Some are more equal than others. And apparently, this one that perpetrates horrors on on women. Uh, anybody who disagrees with them in terms of uh, their spiritual outlook or pretty much anything else, uh, this is this is, they embrace these folks. Uh, so where's the tolerance that they're always talking about? Where is the, the pluralism that they're always talking about? All these values that the so-called progressives espouse, uh, we can now see that uh, they don't really mean what they say, but getting back, Alex, if you don't mind, to, to the point I was trying to get at is, you know, the, the, the real victims in the Middle East are the Christians and other religious minority groups, but of all of them, the Christians are the, are the biggest targets. They're the ones who are caught in the crossfire. They're the ones who are, are a real distinct minority. Uh, you know, you've got Sunnis, you've got Shia, and the next group is the Christians who are not armed, who are not attacking anybody, who don't want to, you know, they don't commit jihad. And uh, and they're being, you know, their, their very lives are at risk every single day in the Middle East. Do we do anything to help those refugees? By the way, these refugees, I'm, I'm one of them. I'm a descendant of these refugees. 
these refugees would assimilate so quickly in our culture. They'd be a blessing to our culture. They love liberty. Uh, they are hardworking people. They don't come to take handouts. Well, like uh, George Norrie. <laughs> exactly. George, good example. And uh, uh, so, you know, but, you know, I think Trump has made this point. I tell you, this all the Lebanese Christians I see have like big successful businesses and are <laughs> building buildings. I mean, it's kind of a cliche, but I haven't found many Lebanese people in America, Lebanese Christians that aren't really contributing. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're employers, we're entrepreneurs. I, I don't know why it, it works that way. But, you know, their values are good American values. They, they you, you know, I'll give you an example. My dad grew up speaking Arabic, okay? He wouldn't speak Arabic in our home. I, I mean, I used to beg him to teach me Arabic. He wouldn't do it because he wanted us to be Americans he didn't even want us to think about the old world. And that's kind of the attitude that you have to have if you're a true immigrant, you know. <laughs> these are not immigrants that we're talking about here. Th these, are, these are invading forces. They, they force their way ahead of other people in line, people who, you know, fill out all the forms, who wait. Uh, and, and, and this is what was. Now, why is this happening, Alex? I've been thinking about this. Why? Why, why is this happening? I'm not talking about why do people want out of their predicament or want into our country, but why is government condoning it? Why are they actually incentivizing it? Why are they going along with this? Why are they taking initiatives, even before these invasions started, to bring more and more of these folks into the United States and into Europe? I think it gets back to one of your themes I think that uh, this is about the empowerment of government, the empowerment of internationalism, uh, it, and it is about, ultimately, it's about the lessening of liberty everywhere, in the United States, in Europe, etc. Government wants to be in control, so, hey, what's wrong with bringing in a bunch of, of folks who, you know, who are indebted to you for their very presence here? And that is ultimately, I think, what's at the core of the immigration problem I hate to say immigration, because it's not immigration. No, it's an invasion, and they don't even call it immigration. They call it migrants. It'd be like if I showed up at my neighbor's house and said, I'm moving in with you. I'm a, I'm a migrant. We have the video of the screaming, the cussing, the Allah Akbars, the anger. Uh, we have the video of them attacking aid workers. We have the video uh, of them posting on Facebook a lot of jihad fighters. And ISIS said six months ago, we're going to send 500,000 immigrants in amongst them will be our people. What is Merkel and the French and, and, and the U.S. going to do and Obama going to do when ISIS, who's already been attacking Europe, really starts attacking when they've brought these people in and advertised? How will they get away with that? Well, I think what ultimately, it doesn't matter what happens. You know, this is why I said, you know, a long time ago, probably on your show, that what is Obama all about? Obama is about instilling and advocating and encouraging chaos. Domestically, internationally, it doesn't matter. Everything he does is about increasing the potential for chaos. Yeah, they're financing groups that say kill police. I, I can't even believe that a socialist would do, I mean, I know socialists are bad, and but I mean, that really is making me think they, he really believes all that 60s revolution stuff. Right, but what, what is chaos? Chaos is an opportunity for the government to step in and solve the problem for people, right? Of course, their, their solution is worse than the, the, the problem, always, because it means a lessening of liberty, it means bigger government, uh, and uh, all that goes along with that. How do you think it's going for Obama? And, and do you believe the reports that there's a split between the Obamas and the Clintons? Your take on election 2016, the persecution of the press, you've been enjoying the persecution of the Clintons, you were their first target. Um, could we see the end of the Clintons, or what do you think is going on? I, I think, you know, I think Hillary's got a real problem. I, I, I have said all along, I don't think she's going to get the nomination. I didn't think so before the email thing even started. I, I have a few friendly wagers in place on that. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think she's got two problems. She's got herself, and she's... <laughs> a lousy salesman for what she believes in and for herself. Let's face it, you know, she she was the heir apparent, uh, you know, back in uh, 2008. 
she didn't she didn't make it uh, when she had everything going for her. I, I don't think she's going to make it this time. She's got two problems. She's got herself and she's got Barack Obama. I don't believe that he, he that she would be his preference. <laughs> for sure. So what do you think about Biden? What I mean, what do you think is happening with this election? Well, you know, I, I don't have a crystal ball. And I don't know whether Biden's going to run or not. I suspect he is going to wind up being, uh, you know, coaxed into the ring. You know, he, he, he gave an interview last night where he sounded really ambivalent at best. But maybe that's a game he's playing. Of course, if there's going to be a, a savior for, you know, Obamaism in this race, it's, he's got to be identified quickly and he's got to get into the race. I think Biden's probably... Uh, their choice. And, you know, sure. uh, aside from what he's going through emotionally about his son, I think ultimately he's going to do what Obama asks him sure. to do. What's your he's gut on Trump? I mean, he's a guy who loves Hillary Clinton. I like what he's saying. But then he flip flop and said, we got to take all these refugees. Then he flip flop back. I mean, what's your and you have a lot of sources in D.C. as well. You're based up there. What's the word on Trump? Well, I don't pay any attention to what D.C. sources say. <laughs> First my own eyes can see. And here's the thing that I think is very encouraging about Trump. Whether he stays in the race, whether he wins, you know, he, he probably he certainly wouldn't be the guy I would pick to, to, uh, uh, to turn America around, but he's there. And he's saying a lot of good things. And I think you agree. And, yes. and, and what's so great about Trump is that whatever he talks about, whatever issues he raises, they cannot be ignored. Donald Trump cannot be ignored. Uh, news agencies have tried to do it, but it's only to their own detriment if they don't cover what Trump says and does. And so this is a, this is a factor I don't think anybody of, of any of us expected to happen if you go back six months ago. Well, they attacked him and it blew up in their face. The mainstream right. media is so hated that they crowned him when they attacked him. Right. I and mean, we can go, we can pick an ideal candidate who agrees with everything we believe in. Uh, right, Alex? But we can't get them elected. <laughs> well, I don't think Trump wants to destroy America like uh, uh, Obama does. Do you think Obama will go quietly? What's your overall feel for the country? We're about to go to break, but in 60 seconds. Uh, yeah. Obama's not going to go quietly. He's going to have a say in this race. I, Hillary Clinton is not his say. Uh, I think that that divide is is very real. It's unmistakable. Uh, he can decide it, of course, with the FBI investigation that he keeps expanding into all of Hillary's problems with the email thing. And that, you know, that's a real thing. I mean, if you and I did something like that, Alex, we'd already be in jail. There wouldn't be some FBI investigation. We'd be, you know, they throw us in jail and they throw away the key. And so that that is real, and it's in Obama's power what happens with Hillary, and I think she knows that. Uh, she's already starting to be get, give signals of criticism toward Obama. So I think Obama's going to have his say, uh, but I don't think they can field anybody on the Democratic side that could stop Donald Trump. Wow. I, so let's talk about a President Trump on the other side. Uh, even if he was one of their operatives before, uh, these folks will certainly not sell themselves out. He might want to be president. Looking at this, clearly they're flooding the United States and Europe with the cheap labor as a political checkmate. And to basically get a new dependent class in here because they realize politically people are waking up. There's a new Gallup poll out. Two thirds of Hispanics don't want more immigrants and don't want to expand immigration. So that whole narrative that Hispanics all want open borders, it's racist. If you don't, we've always known that's bull, but it's coming out. And just the instincts for national survival, I think, will trump pun intended, a lot of their actions, but uh, what curveballs do you see them throwing? What are you most concerned with? The class warfare, the the attack on the family, the injection of trannies everywhere, uh, men's barbershops getting fined for not having women. I mean, it's becoming so crazy, I can't even believe it. You're right, and it's, and it's more than the cheap labor thing. Ultimately, I think, for instance, let's, let's narrow it down to this invasion. Why would this be a good thing for people who want bigger, more powerful government, less individual sovereignty? Because you want to have people who are not even capable of self-government themselves, okay? 
you know, that, 